Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And welcome to another episode of Stat Me Up Band Field Index. Ladies and gents, all the numbers point upwards, don't they? Liverpool sit top of the Premier League. Liverpool sit, you could say, joint top of the Champions League. Second officially, but it's only behind Villa on goal scored. And there's a huge game coming up this weekend at the same time. But here to review... Bit of Chelsea, a bit of Red Bull, look ahead to Arsenal, look ahead to Arna Slot and how he's doing as ever is Ben Boxack. Ben, this is a good time to be a Red. You can't be complaining at this point, can you? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the stats are kind of unprecedented if we're looking at it in terms of how good this start has been. Um, on top of that, you know, we've got some players in great form. Um I think, yeah, it's 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 all exciting, really. Yeah, there is honestly, people, there is so so much to like right now, but we'll get into it. We'll go to the Red Bull game. I mean, last night, Ben one nil win. Darwin Nunes, who people will debate if he stole the goal over Mo Salah, but who really cares right now? It might have been going in off the inside of the post, just sneaking in. Who knows? But we'll talk about Nunes slightly later. I mean. Slot was quite bullish about certain parts of this game in the press conference. What did you make of the overall performance? I thought it was a good performance. It could have been a lot more comfortable. I got to give a shout out to the former Liverpool player, Peter Galacci, and my fellow countryman. I thought he was very good in between the sticks. Obviously, Leipzig themselves created a few more chances and we, we've got to give a shout out to Kevin Gallagher as well because he was really good as well. Uh, so it was really a game of goalkeepers competing against each other uh, and both of them did really well. I think they took the spotlight in this uh, game. I'm not sure why Kostas Timikas was awarded the official man of the match in the game. That was a, a bit of a bizarre situation. I, I would have given it personally, I think, to Keller or Gulachi, but then again, the losing person never really gets the, the man of the match, so probably should have gone to Keller. Um, but yeah, overall, I think uh, even though there were a few saves and a few situations where he, Keller had to do sort of um, his, his fair share, shall we say, I do think defensively this game was still very encouraging and uh, I'm not overly concerned about only scoring one goal as well because Liverpool created plenty of chances too. Yeah, no doubts about it. Even the, the key thing is you, you talk about the XG, I saw that Red Bulls is below one and ours is not too far off three. I think, yeah, we, we were dominant and honest, I was honest about that. The first 15 minutes, we kind of were giving the ball away. But after that, we were pretty dominant by the end. And yes, we could have been tidy in possession, but you cannot have everything. And it's right to mention, I suppose, both keepers, because both have been at Liverpool one previously, in Beta Galaxy one currently, in Cleveland Kelleher. I mean, Keller had to make a few good saves in this. Let's not pretend. What did the stats say about Keller's performance overall? It was really good. I mean, I think the thing that encouraged me the most is acting as a sweeper. So he acts as a sweeper twice in this game, which is very Allison-esque. We see Allison coming out and making those important challenges and, and preventing a goal scoring situation before it even happens. So he did that twice. Um, yeah, one of them perhaps a little bit questionable. I think uh, if, if if Sesco was a better finisher, mm. uh, perhaps yeah, I think he got away with that. But uh, the other situation I thought was very encouraging. Um, six saves overall. Uh, again, that's quite high. Um, in it, especially when um, the XG is is not as high. Um, but yeah, he he, he was good. Uh, seven recoveries as well. So again making those Allison-esque runs and, and cutting out the danger before they happen. Um, and like you mentioned, Leipzig's XG was only 0.76, but, you know, he still prevented 0.76 goals. And that's, that's almost round, if you round that up, that is a one goal that Leipzig probably should have scored and Kevin Keller had prevented that. So that goes to show, you know, how good of a goalkeeper he is because... 
you know, on another day, perhaps it could have been one or if it wasn't for Kelleher. Yeah, no doubt. It was a great save from Sesco one on one and that that fingertip one that was deflected off Karate, really good. And speaking of almost last gasp, Ryan Gravenberg did a few, didn't he? Pinched in, he blocked it at last minute. It seemed another saying another, but let's just be honest, another brilliant performance from the Dutchman. I mean, what did the stats say for Ryan Gravenberg last night? But yeah, the defensive stats were really good. He made the most recoveries from outfield players, uh, seven. Uh, actually joint with Kelleher, but goalkeepers tend to make more recoveries. So it normally you count the, the outfield players only. Um, so yeah, he was also part of seven duels, won five of those. Um, again, that's that's the highest in midfield for Liverpool in this game. Uh, won two out of his three attempted tackles as well. So defensively, very important for Liverpool. But I think one of the, other things I wanted to highlight is, you know, Slot mentioned he, he wasn't happy with maybe some of the sloppiness in term, in possession. However, I don't think that criticism was directed at Graven Birch because he had the best passing accuracy of anyone in this game with 95%. Um, really high, 60 accurate passes, only misplaced three. So, yeah, I don't think there can be any so question marks over over his performance, very solid again. And I think we get into a stage if if he puts in performances like that against Arsenal and Man City, then we we, we got to put him in the conversation for one of not just one of the best holding midfielders in the Premier League, but in world football. If he's doing that in the Champions League week in week out, um, and against the best teams in the league as well, yeah. so. Def- I, th- I think that's something, um, yeah, to keep an eye on. If he can maintain his c- consistency, the, the sky is the limit for him. He's still so young as well. People are forgetting. Born in 2002. So, um, yeah, it's really exciting. And I, I'm really excited about what I'm seeing. Yeah, it almost makes you sick because they born in 2002. But what a player he's been so far this season. I suppose it's fair to ask because... They weren't the only ones who did well. Obviously, another clean sheet, which is important. Any other call-outs from the stats, would you say, at all from last night? Yeah, I think something that stood out to me, and this wasn't necessarily, I think, confirmed by the eye test when I was watching the game, is uh, Cody Gakpo. I didn't think he had a, a hugely standout game, but uh, when I was looking at the stats, he was the most fouled player. Drew four fouls, so that's, that's quite a lot. Clearly, a bit of a nuisance in, in Leipzig's side and um, also created the most chances in the game with, with four chances as well. And I was sort of looking back over the last three games since he started to actually get a few starts, a bit of a run in, in the side. Uh, and no one has created more chances than him. Uh, he's created 11 chances. And I think the second one is Salah at six in those three games. So... Um, he has been probably Liverpool's best creative outlet. Even Alexander Arnold is, is not getting close to him at the moment. So I think that's something that's worth mentioning and worth pointing out uh, because I think he only got one one assist in, in, in those games. But um, it's clearly been a standout when it comes to uh, creativity and uh, maybe his teammates aren't helping him out. Maybe he should have got a few more assists in, in, in those matches because certainly by the volume of chances he's creating, you would say uh, if he's only got one assist, uh, the fact that 10 other chances were not put away, is, is, is he would be disappointed. I'm sure he's saying to his uh, strikers, uh, fellow teammates in training, well, why aren't you putting my chances away? I'm putting some of these on the plate on a plate for you. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to highlight him because I think he's going under the radar a little bit. Yeah, does sound like it. Be interesting to see who gets that starting left hand spot on Sunday, won't it? And probably because you mentioned it, the last few games, and you know, we talked about Cody Gakpo there. It seems right to talk about Darwin Nunes because he's kind of been a bit non-existent this season. But the old, the old cameo, I suppose you'd say against. Bournemouth, but the last few games, Diogo Jota gets his knock, so he plays you know, a good portion of the game against Chelsea. Seems to have a really good performance, works so hard. And last night, he was the match winner. He seems to, I mean, 
on the surface, the eye test, as we call it, he does seem to be really taking his chance. It's important to say working hard. Did the stats bear that out over the last few games as well? Absolutely. So he was involved in 10 duels yesterday uh, against Chelsea when he didn't even start the game. He was involved in 17 duels. So over the course of the, the last two games, almost involved in almost 30 duels for Liverpool. Um, against Chelsea, he won uh, nine of those. I will point out he, he has lost uh, quite a significant amount of those duels. So um, I think 14 duels lost overall. Um which is quite high, but um, at the same time, a lot of those duels are being lost because he's pressing high and uh, yeah. closing down the opponents and not necessarily expected to win those duels, but then Liverpool can regain possession because he's pressed his opponent and yeah. forced him into an error or, or you know, with the way this this high pressing system works. That's just the way it is. Dominic Sobosta is probably Liverpool's most aggressive presser. And if you're looking at his stats in the last few games, he has also lost a lot of duels. I don't think he won one duel against Chelsea. Um, so I, I think that's important to point out. Um, yeah. In terms of the chances, I mean, against Chelsea, he didn't really get a sniff at goal, really, Nunez. But uh, this time around, Definitely a bit more encouraging. He had three shots. Um, obviously, we can have the debate about whether his his goal mm. was going well. From Hassala's header was going in or not. Personally, I think I'm more in the side of it not necessarily going in. I think he would have hit the post, and I think he did the right thing tapping it in. I think as a striker, you you got to have that instinct and you got to make sure and. Uh, I think he did really well staying on side as well because it's not easy when that situation happens. So yeah. credit to him where it's due. I think at this point, um, Liverpool are crying out for a prolific striker. And uh, the hope is that hopefully he, he can be that. Um, I'm not seeing any numbers at the moment that reassures me about that. Uh, but... I am encouraged by the amount of duels he's involved in, the pressing that he's doing. Um, I think sooner or later that work will be rewarded. It, it just shows that he is very determined and very eager to want to do well. So um, that's that, I think, is the most encouraging thing about him for me. Yeah, last few games, it, you can't deny his work rate. Right? You can debate the other stuff, but... It has been a positive few games for Darwin Nunes. And, I mean, speaking of games, Ben, there's a couple of things we've got to talk about with Arna Slot here. I mean, as it was highlighted, the first Liverpool manager to win his first six away games. That's obviously, in it. I mean, some tough visits there to the San Siro, to Red Bull as well. But even just to things like Old Trafford, you just look at the fixtures, it's an impressive six away wins. I'll probably be intrigued from the stats point of view. Is there any other Liverpool manager even close to that? Or is he kind of outstripping, you know, other manager at the top in these first six games away? I think it's, even if we're just looking at English football in general, it's quite rare. The last person to do it was Pep Guardiola. And obviously we know how successful he has been at City. But yeah, just um, looking at Liverpool managers from their first six away games, uh, Klopp, I think comes the closest with four uh, out of the six away games. Um, and the rest, like we're talking about really successful people here, like Joe Fagan, for example, he's won three. Dalglish, this is his first tenure at Liverpool when he was very successful. Just one from his first six away games. Again, Shankly, two from his first six away games. And uh, Bob Paisley, the most successful Liverpool manager in Liverpool history has only won three out of his first six. So, yeah, it's it's quite unpresent, unprecedented to 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 win all six of them. Uh, like I said, Klopp has come the closest. The rest uh, can't even compare. So, uh, obviously, all of them will have taken charge of Liverpool in different situations, different eras, different environments. So. All of that, it, everything comes with a caveat when it comes to statistics. But I think if you're looking at Fagan or Paisley, they inherited 
some of the best Liverpool sides in uh, Liverpool's history. And um, still, they they weren't able to win as many away games as Slot has done. So you've got to give credit to Slot. Um, obviously, I think in the future, this this team or well, an iteration of this team will go down as, as one of the greatest in history. Even though I think maybe in terms of silver there, it's not really up there in terms of for looking at the eighties and seventies, but still you you gotta say the the points tallies that this team has achieved and some of the competitions where they've, you know, reached the finals, like the Champions League so many times, they they they, they will go down eventually as one of the greatest Liverpool sides in history. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And- Listen, let's hope we are mentioning on a slot against those names at the end of his tenure in the future. But a brilliant start. And we just talked away. I mean, as other people have mentioned, you'll have seen it, Ben. It's a brilliant start in terms of 11 from 12 victories. An astounding start, it really is. And even people will bring into the element of the teams they played, maybe some of the easier ones they could say, but there's some impressive victories still on the docket there. And 11 from 12 is a brilliant start from anyone. I mean, all the, talking about other Liverpool managers, did any come close in terms of that sort of start? It is just a start, but does anyone come close? Yeah, I mean, it's probably not a surprising one. I did say, I mentioned he's the most successful manager in Liverpool's history, so Bob Paisley, he's got nine. Um so two wins away from a uh, slot. Um, that's still a very impressive start, I think, out of 12 games. Um, and then Klopp on seven, Shankly seven, Joe Fagan seven, and Darglish seven as well. Uh, so they are the ones that come the closest. And I mean, if, if we're looking at, you know, historically, who have been the most successful managers yeah. in Liverpool's past then 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 it, it, it it's that lot isn't it so um the fact that slot is already being mentioned around those names i think is, is definitely exciting um and i think um you know if we can continue this momentum then you know hopefully one day we can talk about him being a permanent sort of name on that list in terms of looking back at liverpool great great and great liverpool managers yeah, still, a, I mean, he's one of those people will say, and quite rightly, there's a heck of a long way to go for Arna Slot. But we have to be honest, we can only base it on the data size we've got. And based on what we're seeing, you can't really ask too much more. And I even like that the press or the the post match press conference, there was still a tiny little bit of a mention of Nottingham Forest, all that game was brought up in terms of 11 v 12. So I almost love the fact he just won't let that go at the same time but yeah great results we can't pretend Chelsea victory Red Bull victory and Ben there's a massive game at the weekend you can't really undersell this it's absolutely huge and the billing is taking care of itself a little bit because injuries for Arsenal suspensions the Saliba the Saka we know though Saka will be fit despite what Mikel Arteta has alluded to but this is going to be if a super tough game, whatever, you know, however anyone dresses it up, whatever their opinions, whether it's the, the best, the right time to play Arsenal. Mikel Arteta talked about, you know, don't worry about us, we'll be fully firing and ready. I'm expecting this to be the first negative of this show so far, but you might be correcting me on that. What's our record like at the Emirates? So, I think, again, it, it comes with... This, this comes with bits of caveats, really. Um, so if we're just looking at all competitions, it's four wins in the last six games at the Emirates. Um, so that's pretty good, you would say. Uh, but then if we're looking at the Premier League, we're getting down to two wins for Liverpool and three wins for Arsenal in the last five games. Um, and if we're going... Even further than that, Liverpool's last win at Arsenal in the league was over two years ago, back in March 2022. Right. That's when, you know, I would say Arsenal after that started to get good, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, I think since then, Liverpool haven't had 
a lot of success. It, it's only been 2023 and 2024 at the Emirates, so it's not a huge sample size. But um, yeah, the, the the recent occasions, I think, in the league have been disappointing of affairs for Liverpool. Um, and that has come with, you know, Arsenal being elevated to the, the quality that they are by Mikel Arteta. Uh, they've gotten stronger, I think, since the summer. Uh, results may not necessarily re- reflect that, but I think the players they have brought in has made them stronger. Um, even just the players they've kept, the you know they are there. There were new players there who came in last year, uh, who are now sort of more settled, like Declan Rice and stuff. Um, so I think overall, it's uh, not going to be. Uh, an easy game for Liverpool by any stretch of the imagination, even with some of the absentees that you know yeah. you've mentioned: Saliba, potentially Saka, Calafiori, um, and, and a few others as well. I, I think it's still going to be a very tough test, and I think we spoke about this off air. But um, they all this every time we mention an opponent having an injury crisis or not having uh, their best players available. I I think back to Barcelona and uh, that 4-0 at Anfield without Mo Salah, without Roberto Firmino, um, no one would have given Liverpool a chance heading into that game. But the spirit that Liverpool had in the team, um, I think they were almost galvanised by those absences and uh, it, it made them... The, the sort of players who came in in the absence of Salah, like Origi, um, to and Shakiri as well, to basically have the game of their lives. Uh, and um, I'm expecting Arsenal's players to to try to do the same. You you are going to be covering those absentees. So um, for me, I I'm, I'm expecting this to be a really really big test, the the toughest test of the season so far even with the orders injuries. Yeah, no doubts that crowd will be behind them. And you did last season, as you mentioned, that we were pretty tepid in the league game where we lost 3-1, weren't we? Was it wasn't the, the best performances up there with the, the worst early doors. Yes, we won the FA Cup encounter, but it's a different, as you said, the wins in the FA Cup. It's not the same by any means. And speaking of records against Arsenal, we always talk about Mo Salah at some point. And we know Mo Salah's record against the big six is usually pretty special. What's Mo Salah's record like against Arsenal specifically? Yeah, so I think, again, this is a bit of a mixed bag. Um, so he's actually scored the fifth. Uh, in, in terms of opponents, uh, he scored the m- fifth most goals in his career against Arsenal with 10 in 16 matches. He's only scored more goals against Man United, Tottenham, Man City and West Ham. So if you're looking at his top five, anyone who says he's not a player for the big occasions, you've got Man United there, Tottenham, Man City and Arsenal. Uh, That's some of the strongest sides in the Premier League. So I think you can very clearly refute anyone who claims he doesn't step up for the big games uh, with with those statistics. Um, But yeah, even in terms of his sort of winning record, eight wins in 16 matches, just four defeats. So when he plays, Liverpool don't tend to lose. Um, but the reason why I said it's a mixed bag is because he doesn't score too many against Arsenal at the Emirates. Just two in six games for Liverpool. Uh, and his last goal there in the league was over three years ago back in the 2020-21 season when we still had COVID. I mean, we, we still have COVID, but <laughs> we had COVID restrictions. And I think that game was behind closed doors. So, um, yeah, if we're looking at the last time he scored against Arsenal with fans in the stadium at the Emirates, uh, we have to go back to his first season at Liverpool in 2017-18. So, um, it's been a while. <laughs> so to speak and his record with fans in in the Emirates is uh isn't the greatest even though uh paradoxically he still somehow has 10 goals against them in 16 matches uh, yeah. I will say actually one of those did come for Chelsea um uh, at Stamford Bridge against Arsenal so 
Wow. Um, I did count that one as well. Um, but yeah, um, I think uh, he will need to improve on, on the statistics at the Emirates uh, if Liverpool are going to be successful. And let's be honest, we would not for one second bet against Mo Salah this weekend. And we all hope it's a positive result. Final question I'm going to ask you, Ben, just because, I mean, it is a huge game and everything will be naturally built towards this at the weekend. It is a big game. There will be people saying, well, without Saliba, we know Saka will be back, but their injuries, etc. No Cal Fiore, etc. It may be a good time to play Arsenal. Would you shake hands on a draw right now? <laughs> you know what I knew you were going to ask this question because we talked about it off air so for the last sort of 20 minutes I've been thinking about it um, I think at this stage yeah because it's still early doors on the honest slot isn't it um, we yeah. Liverpool I, I think are just getting started even though it's been a brilliant start um, whereas Arsenal are sort of you know several years ahead of Liverpool uh, and even with the absences, like I said, they're going to be a great opponent for Liverpool. They're, they're going to try to um, give their very best. And I think the crowd will be buzzing. It's a big stadium with a, a lot of people. They're going to be well up for it. I think after that, I sort of riled up the fans by trying to make them into an underdog, uh, which is what, Klopp often did with Liverpool. I think that was a clever tactic. That has been a clever tactic in the lead up to this game that he has done. So, yeah, I'm, for the first time this season, I feel like it's one of those games where I'm not feeling super confident um, heading into it. Obviously, Slot had that little bit of a test against Arteta in pre season, uh, but that was only pre season. And <laughs> the, some of the, the players that were missing, it wasn't a super real test um this is going to be a proper proper big big challenge for him and his first big challenge so i think if we can come away with it avoiding a defeat then i'll take it so yeah i'm with you i think i'll, I'll i would take a draw yeah i don't think it, if we get that we'll have to see because we'll roll the dice on sunday i don't think anyone would complain that any still big a brilliant star, whatever, from on a slot. So there we are, ladies and gents. All roads point to the Emirates. All roads point to Sunday. Fingers crossed, all roads lead to some points. A minimum of one, but three would be nice at the same time, wouldn't it? So all it leads me to say is ever, Ben, for the time, for the stats, for the insight, much appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much. Enjoy that. And ladies and gents, that was another Stat Me Up Band Field Index.